Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, we are going to have a quick peek on our software development method, and we chose uh, ATDD for certain purposes and, and reasons, and this is really like a non-polished story, how we did the ATDD and how, what kind of uh, findings we had on that and, and how it helped us doing probably better software. Okay, a uh, few words about uh, the um, operation environment where we are working at. First of all, the uh, Finnish Emergency Response Center Agency is a very unique agency in the world. Uh, it is state-owned, state is running that thing, and there is a one agency which handles all the, the uh, incidents and incident reports within Finland. When we are talking about other countries, there are uh, those services is provided more local or, or regional providers, and uh, usually they are using models like call taker dispatcher model, where uh, when when uh, emergency call comes in, there is one person who answers the call and, and finds out that what that is all about, and then he or she forwards that call to another person who is more familiar with that topic. And <clears throat> so, in Finnish model, all the, the authorities are handled by our ERC agency. And the ERC agency, or the, the authorities that they are providing the, the information about the incidents and so forth, includes police, rescue, emergency, social services, and also the Frontier Guard, which is basically available there as a, as a units. So in Erika, you, you can see all the uh, units from the Frontier Guard as well, because in some places, in the border, border areas, that is the first and, and most likely first uh, authority to come to the incident place, the location. Uh, yeah, and that is the, because all the, the authorities and all of these, these uh, volunteer corps and, and policemen or whatsoever, they are very much skilled and, and trained for, for different kind of for giving the first aid and so forth. So that is the reason why the frontier guard is, is there. Okay. Uh, yeah, so few figures, I don't read them out loud, you can read. Uh, the average response time to, to emergency call is four seconds, and it was 21, it was four seconds, now it's, it's three seconds. It makes the world of difference when you are in, a, in a trouble. Uh, okay, and yeah, six sites, meaning Kerava, Turku, Pori, Kuopio, Vasa and Oulu are the sites where there is an emergency center. Okay, Erika. Terve Tampere. That was the voice of Erika. Is emergency response center software or information system our ERC agency is using today? Uh, it has been in use since uh, 2018, and uh, it is a basically a computer-aided dispatching software. So, so computer aids the uh, ERC operator to define what is the best response to, to certain incident. Uh, what makes Erika special is a few things. In my, in my view, there is a lot of nice features in that, and, and, uh, but few to mention. First one is that the incident response capability requirements and response model. So basically, uh, what does that mean? That when call comes in, uh, the operator starts to ask the questions uh, which are provided by the, the ERIC, and then they fill the information in there. And depending on, on the, these uh, assessment questions, Erika is, is defining that what is the best possible response to that specific incident. And basically the response and capability requirements define that, that, that what kind of uh, uh, capabilities you need on site, where the, for instance, car accident or if there is an apartment building uh, burning, what kind of uh, resources you need. For instance, if you have a five-story high apartment building, you obviously need a ladder. And then there's a unit which has a ladders, or, or, or even this kind of a basket that you can lift to the building. And now, based on these inputs, uh, 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 
Erica calculates the possible possible best possible uh, uh, response to that incident, and it may contain various different units. And the most important thing is that the, all the, the requirements are fulfilled. And even though there might be a one weather unit f further away, which fulfills the uh, better, gives a better response, we can use more close units for that. So that is a good thing. Then the network operating model. I'm losing the microphone, by the way. Thank you. Uh, second thing is that the oper network operating model, what, what Erika is providing, is, is very nice. It gives a certain resilience to Finnish society. Like, in, if we lose one of those, those ERCs, it means that the, the rest of the ERCs can take all the uh, information, all the, all the calls to them and, and handle all of the incidents, what happening for instance, Turku area, if that, is, that, that ERC is lost for somehow meaning we are losing the, the services in there, we're losing the power from the entire Turku area or, or something like that, or major, uh, major network breakdown. Then also, I think the more probable way what the, this network to operating model is providing is that the, when you have, uh, Finland is a, is a big country, not by the population, but the, by the area, and we have a lot of different kind of uh, weather conditions over here. So if we have, for instance, in, in southern Finland, we have a storm coming in, and there is a lot of trees falling on and uh, these kind of things, then people will call to the ERC. And now, within this network operating model, the calls are distributed all over the country, and, and they, you can, you will be answered, the call will be answered much, much faster instead of having those calls handled only within the one, one ERC. Yeah, because you never know what is the incident in the guy who is next in the line. Okay, uh, synthetized speech, speech uh, text-to-speech is not as, as a software uh, feature. It is not that new or, or nothing fancy about that, but that, that makes the world of difference for our network, for our ERC operators. But because now they can, can continue to discuss and talk to these guys who are calling to them and just kind of a single push of a button the, all the dispatching is done automatically, including the, the uh, alarms which are made in speech. Later on, we are going to have a video on that. And then one thing what we testers actually really focus and, and work all the time is the high availability and, and uh, recoverability features. So that is something what we really concentrate all the time and our, most of our work time is consumed on that. Yeah, and uh, we have to remember that the, the <laughs> uh, one of the, the older guys from the from the agency said once that the, the, if if we lose one minute time to provide the assistant assistance to the people in need, the life the, the survival expectations uh, drops by ten percent. So one minute delay, ten percent less probability that this person is alive. And that is something what we are constantly working on and uh, that creates some stress as well to us. Okay. Uh, okay. So, now a little bit to the, the AAT uh, acceptance test driven development. So basically if somebody don't know yet that what the acceptance test driven development is, uh, that is the method where you actually create the acceptance test before you are coding a single line, line of code. And why, why we took this in our, our uh, uh, toolbox was that before we started to using this, we had really vague specs. The specs was, was where they were really, really, really bad. And, and that led to situations that, that, that every time when we completed something, we came in the end of our, our 
uh, increment. We provided the software to the customer, and they were going through that and said that there is these and these and these defects in there. And we started to arguing with them, no, but it, it is done exactly as the spec was. So there was a mistake in the spec, so you gave us a wrong spec. And, and that created a lot of confusion, and uh, nobody likes to fight. So, so it, it led, led to, to quite undesirable results. But, uh, as addition, while we were fighting, there was a lot of delay in the customer feedback, and typically our, our developers already moved already to the next thing, what they were working on. And, and we know, we all, I think we all know that what happens when the developer moves on the next subject, he or she forgets everything what he has done before. So that created a major context switch. So when, when they get, got back and, and started to do those defects and fixing them, or creating new features, they had to learn again that, okay, what I was doing over here, and it was almost like you were going back to somebody else's code. And that was really not a good thing. Also, we had the broken phone phenomena on our hands, so everybody has played the broken phone thing, that somebody tells a story and then tells it to somebody else and then so forth. And so the, how did they, at the end of the, uh, the queue, the story has been changed totally. And over here, we had an issue that we, we were really concentrating on that, that uh, we had a customer, we have had a PO, they had the discussions, they read the specs, and then they gave that to a developer. And developers starting to ask questions. Okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? And then suddenly the PO answers something on top of their head. And so basically the story has changed totally and we created something which was not actually wanted. Also, there was a language barrier. So, so uh, these guys working in the ERC, they know exactly how the things are working on their, their uh, ERC and how the logistics go and how the operators' works flow, workflows goes. And they know exactly how the authorities are working on the field, so what police does and so forth, how things can escalate and so forth. So, so but we don't know anything about that. Also, they are not software professionals as we are. So there was a really a language barrier. And there was one story on that, that when, when I was talking with one of our, our customer representatives, and there was one very talented coder in there, and he was describing the things and how things are working and what, what happens. And, and then she said to me that, okay, can, can you translate that? I don't speak nerd so well. No. Yeah. Okay, what was our expectations? We expected that we are going to have much, much faster feedback uh, from customer, what they think about what we have delivered, and also we thought that we are going to provide much, much better uh, product in the sense that the delivery accuracy will be better, so, so they are getting first time what they really wanted and needed. Also, we had this, this uh, early develop, uh, involvement of, of our test engineers, so, so in my view, the software developers are focusing very much on the things, what they are doing at the moment, so they go into very detailed things and go very deep, and they, they kind, of, kind of do this kind of, they, they do something over there, and they do something over there, and they don't have that kind of a really a good overview on the entire system, and especially in case of, of Erika or Eric, this kind of a, uh, uh, computer aided dispatching software, there is a lot of stuff behind that. There is a lot of radio, radio things going on, and phone uh, networks, and, and all of that kind of things, so they don't know that. And our tests, testers know exactly what, what those things are because we are doing a lot of end-to-end -to -end testing. Also, uh, and even so, that the, the majority of our on-duty personnel, the guys who are maintaining the system and, and reacting some errors or, or interference in the system, they are actually test engineers, uh, about half of them, at least. Okay, and uh, one thing what we thought that we could have a lot, much, much more clearer maturity uh, view to the maturity or readiness of the, of the customer requirements. So like, like when we have the acceptance tests and we are running those, we know exactly where we are standing at, 
what percentage of the things are already uh, is, is this done or no? And we added that to also to, to uh, our DOD. So, so acceptance test passed. The epic was done, and then some documentation and all of that kind of things. But yeah, very important part of the DOD anyway. Okay, uh, then what happened and what was good and what was bad? Uh, as I'm a test engineer, I like to start with uh, with the bad things always. And one thing is that we had a lot of repetition in our tests. So we had the pass and fail criteria and all of that kind of things. And that, that led absolutely to the bad, bad readability of the test. And bad readability led to situation that the customer did not provide us any meaningful feedback about those test cases because they got fed up about reading the same thing again and again and again. Also, I think that we, we really uh, tried to introduce too much at the same time. We rolled out the ATDD process, how we wanted to, to develop person, our test engineers to create uh, acceptance tests. And uh, at the same time, we, we added something like the, the ISO IAC 25010 uh, standard, which basically defines quality characteristics of good software, eight of them. And uh, we wanted to guys to, to have a quality assurance questions. So basically asking the questions, that, okay, what makes the good software and, and what kind of issues, for instance, what kind of situations could lead to breakage of this specific feature and, and so forth. So, and that would create a good test case. And yeah, and that was a little bit too much. And also what we actually sucked at is that we, we wanted to, to, to do a lot of automated ATDDs as well, to acceptance tests, a lot, lot of them. And we tried to be clever and we wanted to have those test cases described within the test code and it did not really work well. The customer didn't comment at those at all. They didn't see any value of all of those and they, they just, just did not comment on them. What was good was that the, we had a really, really usable test asset. Even so, that the customer is today using the same test management uh, tool what we are using, and they are using the test cases what we created together. And well, there is also kind of a downside of, on that, that, that uh, if, if customer is go only going to the acceptance test what we created, it means that a lot of the, the important aspects of the software is, is left uh, outside. Like, is that software really suitable for their use? Because the ATs uh, really measure the, the requirements and how the requirements are fulfilled. Even though uh, the, the uh, quality assurance questions and those non-functional aspects did not go that well, uh, we had some test cases on the non-functional areas, reliability and performance especially. And that means that when the development teams are running those tests, we are getting the better view on the performance and reliability issues much more earlier and meaning, obviously, a shorter uh, lifespan of a defect. Feedback time was definitely reduced. It was really, really good because they, now when we, we got something out, something what they could use, they could take that, go to our lab, do the tests, and, and give the immediate feedback. And that was, that was, I think, one of the best things what we had. And also, we have had no disagreement with the customer anymore that if this is a feature, or if this is a change, or if this is a defect, it is, is providing you to answer, answer if that, what, what that is. It does not mean that we did any less changes. We did have, well, not exactly, maybe less, but not at least more changes. But the, the, uh, no, any fighting anymore. And that is a good thing because, as said, you are losing a lot of uh, energy if you are fighting on those. Yeah, one thing. I probably forgot to mention that one, after we were work, walking away from one of these acceptance test uh, sessions where we were creating these test cases, and I, I think it was one of the first ones, I was asking from our developer, one of the developers whom I really much value, I asked from him that, okay, what do you think? 
for me this feels quite okay, but what do you think? And the developer said that, okay, first time within this project, I know exactly what is expected from me and what I'm supposed to do now when I need to start to do something. So, so it was a really, really effective way to, to uh, convert these vague customer uh, needs and, and requirements into something tangible what the developer could work, could work on. Okay. Uh, we like things to improve continuously. And uh, we did, we had our own MAGA moment, make ATDD great again. And, and uh, we did some changes to our process. And uh, one of the changes were, uh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm keeping to forgetting the things. Uh, as addition that we, 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 we had this AT uh, acceptance test things going on, we also uh, take our PO and, and put, that, put him to the side table and sitting there, and our developers and customer guys were talking to each other. So there was nobody interpreting anything to them, but, but they, they could have actual live discussion between each other and, and, and asking the questions and, and so forth. And especially our developers valued on those cases when they had them, because the customer has also the project personnel on there, but now we had a real live uh, ERC operators to coming to our design, design sessions. And, and then our developers were talking directly to the guy who is actually using the system. And from there, we got a lot of information that we couldn't get anywhere else. So, so I really prefer that thing in the future as well. Uh, yeah, okay. The change is to acceptance test with the minimum effort. So something what we did also that we lowered the decision level so that the developers and the guys who were uh, on the customer side who were doing the definitions and all of that kind of things, they were entitled to do the changes and, and, and make the decisions. So, so no, no need to any, any committee or so to approve them, but, but let's do the changes and so forth. Also, we did the test cases with, which covers more and, and just remove the repetition. So a so little bit more clever on that. Also, we wanted to have a more faster customer feedback. And, and before, well, in the early phases, we just provided those test cases to customer and maybe had some discussions, and, and that's it. And then they came up with some, some feedback. And that was not good enough. And, and now we are doing so that we are going through these test cases together with the customer. So there is also discussion, discussion going on in there. And, and uh, even in the, while we are creating the acceptance tests, we are getting better uh, feedback from there. And the delivery accuracy will get better all the time. Also, um, I think that the more aids to the test case creation, or when we are creating test case, this is good. Visual things are always good. Some kind of a UI layout, wiring diagrams or wire diagrams, these kind of things, which describes what we are doing, actually. It's, it's always helpful. People are, are visual person, visual beast anyway. The forthcoming round, a uh, few things what I would like to, to concentrate next is that the, the, we need to have a, a better, better traceability on our test cases. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I said that our customer has the same test management system we have. Obviously, we have our own servers and they have their own servers. But need, we need to have some kind of active link on there that oh, wherever, you, wherever you are doing the changes, there will be a marked, mark left and also that the sync between those two places is, is uh, live. Also, uh, when we are doing changes into the code, I would like to really uh, to achieve the situation when you t do the change, you kind of uh, take and lift and see that all the test cases which needs to be changed, and, and that, that creates also the better documentation. Life cycle of test cases is something what we need to consider as well. Um, obviously, the AT uh, acceptance tests are providing the, the written description of a feature, how it works. But at the some point of time, uh, I think we need to get rid of the acceptance test and do something else to cover that thing. And also, obviously, if we have some automated test cases, what we have, uh, I think that we just need to keep running on those. One thing what I would like to see happen as well is that we have the acceptance tests 
now very much concentrating on the customer roles or what customer wants. But I think that we need to take also care that, okay, what are the other roles working on that system? Maintainers, testers, all of these kind of persons, uh, so that we are actually getting the, the test cases and, and features, so that if, if something wrong happens in the system, how, how do you know? Where you get the information? Are you able to roll back and, and see that what has happened on that system? And we are really much, because we are talking about this kind of high, high availability system, the monitoring of the system is, is very, very key. Okay, uh, I believe that next slide is something that you probably don't want to see. We were talking about the stress and, and how demanding this work is and this high availability thing and, and also that if, if something, if we cock up something, you can read it from the Iltalehti. And, but still, this, is the, this image is, or picture is taken from, from, it's from 29th of September 2018. Uh, it's me, if you don't see the... Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's taken just after 3 a.m. and the first emergency call just have arrived to Erika system and the old system was shut down. Even though we had made hundreds of millions of calls to the system, and we had made hundreds of millions of, of uh, of incident assessments and dispatches and all of that kind of things. We have rehearsed hundreds of things what could go wrong, and we have and some of those multiple times, and we, we really have been training on that. And then still, it is kind of a very interesting and very very. Yeah. It is a great moment to see that, okay, the first, you, your, your stuff is going on in the production and, <clears throat> and, and nothing goes wrong. Everything goes as, as expected. Yeah, but okay, that, that's it. There is a product displacement also in there from the Gold Master brand. Yeah, okay. The next image, more male beauty. This is our situation room. And, uh, oh, yeah. Quite typical male behavior, Finnish male behavior. This is from Saturday morning, a little bit after 4 a.m. Probably some, but not necessarily guys who are on their 40s, playing video games and drinking soft, soft drinks. And also we have some rock and roll playing on there, some probably from 70s or 80s. Uh, yeah, soundtrack of our, our past. But okay, so our, our, our situation room, and uh, this was really one, one Saturday morning, and uh, you can see here our, our monitoring things. So, so we have a topic over there, which is providing us uh, all the alarms, what we need to do if, if there's something goes wrong. And then we have our, our, our uh, graphs, which tells a lot of operational information and how our services are doing in there. And the, the, Game over there that is uh, between Liverpool and Madrid, and Madrid is leading four to one. I think that is a detail what you want to know. Yeah, okay. Uh, right. I think that's, that's it. Can we have the video, please? One thing what I like very much about this work is that they, they, we have a very nice test tools. As you can see, this is kind of a fire truck, and uh, <clears throat> there is a little bit of silence over there, so, so I tell go walk you through uh, on this. This is the, the Finland proper uh, two, the, two fire trucks, actually, the S21 and S23. And there you can see. No, niin, siinä meillä on testilaitteita, kaksi ykkösen ajoneuvoasema nyt ei mahu tähän kuvaan, vaan huuetaan. Yes, and everything in in that area. This this happens on the hour. So so that if when when the uh, alarms are taking place, uh, nobody is gets gets excited or, or anything like that because this is going to be a big alarm anyway. Yeah. Okay. So tetra phones over there. 
and that where is, where is the map, that is the, the uh, uh, field command system display, and then there is a, this, this fire engine guys, their own phones over there. Ykkösen kaksi kolmosen aseman. Tuliko kaksi ykkösen vielä? Ei ole tullut vielä sinne, kyllä se rupeaa soimaan. Nyt tuli kaksi ykkösen. Eli jonkinnäköinen viive. Eli kaikki laitteisi meillä tuli tähän jo keikka ja tuota viimeksi ei toiminut tuo navigointi, niin katsotaanpa. Joo, kyllä se nyt tuota nu reiti on tosi. Eli se oli siinä. Joo, se oli siinä. Yeah, well, that's it I think. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Awesome. It's actually amazing to see things actually working like that. It's really cool to see. A couple of questions coming in. Um, what? Not from me. From the clever people in my ear. Okay. Um, was the project on budget? Um, oh, actually, no, I'll bring another one here first of all. First of all, um, I've heard that when considering requirements, ATD um, is the best way to connect management level to developers. What are your thoughts on this? <laughs> that was a good one. So, yeah, why not? It's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the, the uh, yeah. The first of all, we used to accept as this driven development to, to, to clarify things with our 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 customers, but. I wouldn't see any reason why this would not work with the management as well, because they, <laughs> it, it, yeah, I think so, yes. Excellent. Got a couple more here. Any more in the audience? Any questions at all? We can throw a, we can throw a, a cube at you. It's, it's pain free. <laughs> why don't we? Mark. <laughs> uh, so how, how many design sessions you had with the customer versus how long this project? Yeah, okay, we have been using ATDD of something like a little bit more than two years now. And the, the, the actual project from the very beginning, I mean that when, when, when the uh, customer started to, to go through the idea about it, we, they need a new system, it, it started something like 11 years ago. And we have guys in our team who has been there from the very beginning and they are having 10 years on, on that. But the ATDD is now used for four. Two week, uh, two years, a little bit more, and uh, how many design sessions? It totally depends that what, what, how big the change is. We had, for instance, what, what you heard over there, the the, uh, the voice alarm, Eric was speaking. Uh, we had a small feature which got kind of a combines those those speeches so that we can get the alarms through much more faster. I think that there was only two, but then we had a, like a big thing related to to. Um, Point, point of interest. We did a major overhaul. I, I think that they had something like a five or six design sessions. So it, it totally depends on how big is the feature. So, so how often do you those? One second, do that say again? Uh, how often you get the design events with the customer? It also depends. But the, the um, little bit more than a week apart, I think that you can really go, uh, prepare yourself and uh, prepare the material, prepare things and kind of, kind of go forward. It, it's, it's not really useful that to kind of have a really, really long design sessions again and again and again. So it's, it, I think that this is the better view out. Thank you so much. Um, 